We are standing in Adamant Square along the western edge of Ardsley, New York, where Ashford Avenue and the Sawmill River Road, otherwise known as 9A, intersect. If you follow Route 9A north of Ardsley, you arrive at Elmsford, and traveling further north reveals the great expanse of New York State. South of Ardsley is a portion of Hastings-on-Hudson, Yonkers, and New York City, continuing down the east coast of the United States. To the east of Ardsley are communities like Hartsdale, White Plains, and Scarsdale. Travel further east and you arrive at Long Island Sound and the Atlantic Ocean. To the west is Dobbs Ferry, the Hudson River, and the United States beyond. Now imagine traveling back in time 10,000 years. The Ice Age is ending and glacial ice has created hills and valleys where towns like Ardsley will eventually be built. Woolly mammoths wander the land foraging for food. The first humans arrive in the area that will become known as the Hudson Valley. Flash forward thousands of years. The area we know as Ardsley is part of the hunting grounds for the native population known as the Waquisquex, a branch of the Mohegan tribe of the Algonquin nation. They live along the Hudson River but travel inland to hunt and fish along the Neperhan River known today as the Sawmill River. Flash forward again, and it's now the early 1600s. The first Europeans are arriving in the Hudson Valley. They are traders and settlers and opportunists who form communities along the Hudson River, seeking a better life for themselves than they could ever hope to achieve in Europe. Over the next hundred years, an increasing number of European settlers are arriving in the Hudson Valley, pushing the native population out of the area. The trails left behind by these Native Americans become the first established colonial roads. In Ardsley, the east-west trail connecting Martin Day Dobbs Ferry to Scarsdale and Long Island Sound becomes Ashford Avenue. Another trail breaks off from Ashford Avenue and leads to what is now Heatherdell Road connecting the Hudson River to White Plains. Now let's move ahead in time once again to the year 1781. The United States is in the midst of an epic war with Great Britain to win its independence. Ardsley doesn't officially exist yet, but it is an area known as Sawmill Corners. It offers open farmland where American and French troops camp while their commanders work out what must happen next to secure America's independence. George Washington's American troops camp on the land between present-day Concord Road School and Ardsley High School. Washington's long-term aide-de-camp, Alexander Hamilton, drills his light infantry on this land over the next few weeks. Washington's headquarters are at Joseph Appleby's farmhouse along present-day Secor Road. French troops under the command of General Rochambeau camp further east in the area that is now Sprain Road in the vicinity of Sunningdale Golf Course. Washington and Rochambeau meet often at the Odell House in Hartsdale, conveniently located between both camps. Washington wants to attempt to retake Manhattan, which is under British control. Both Washington and Rochambeau realize the impossibility of the strategy and decide instead to undergo a long march south to Virginia. After many weeks, the American troops begin their march starting down present-day Heatherdale Road, then known as Military Road through Sawmill Corners and into Dobbs Ferry. Their march continues for weeks to Virginia, where the final decisive battle of the Revolutionary War takes place. Within months of the Ardsley encampment, officially the longest encampment of the Revolutionary War, the British admit defeat at the Battle of Yorktown. Many of the crucial decisions that lead to America's victory over Great Britain had been made in and around Ardsley. Flash forward another hundred years. The place we know as Ardsley is now a hamlet called Ashford, home to a handful of families and farms. Pickle farms are clustered close to where Adam and Square is today, 